Hello, and welcome to another video from Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. And what we have here is an Orion HCCA 5K. It's the 1DV2 board, a Revision B board. And uh, I just wanted to do a, a pretty quick video here of uh, the, I don't know, the testing or diagnosis diagnosis process of how I put one of these back together. Uh, so I just finished up the power supply on this thing. Um, it's got the typical burnt, uh, burnt vias, burnt trace um, in the power supply. Um, got the drive itself back up and running. But what I like to do before I install output transistors is I like to make sure that my drive is still functional. Uh, these transistors, if you get them too far off, they don't line up very well with the uh, insulators that they use on the heatsink. So these can kind of be a pain to solder back together. Uh, but what I do is I take the board, place it back in the heatsink, and then I adjust the transistor to the thermal insulator, then tack down the transistor leg to get it in the proper place. But I hate to do that. I hate to put the outputs in. Uh, come to find out that later that I got to pull the board back out to, because I don't have drive. Um, it's it's just a more peace of mind that I have drive before I install new transistors. Uh, so that's kind of the uh, the topic of this particular video is. So how do we know that the output section is still functional? So on these HCCAs, you have to have an input signal. Uh, right off camera here, an input signal into the RCAs to get the circuit itself um, oscillating. Without the signal, you will have no drive on the low outputs. And if you notice, I'm always mentioning the low side drive when I'm checking drive without transistors in. Which is true. You won't see high side drive without transistors installed. And if to understand all that, you just need to go through and uh, study up on the schematics of drive ICs. Uh, for instance, the HCCAs use the uh, IR2110s, drive ICs. So it's a, 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 flow, uh, a floating high side drive. It's bootstrapped. So uh, the low side drive, in essence, is, allows the high side drive to charge uh, in a roundabout way. Again, uh, study up on your data sheets on the schematics of these drives and example circuits to understand how the how the drive of these particularly function. So kind of right off the bat, that tells you if you don't have low side drive, you're not gonna have high side drive. That's why I'm always probing the low side. The low side doesn't use a, a sourced current to drive the low side. That's how, that's how can we can see the signal on the low side drive. So I do have my scope set up. I did have my scope set up. I see it's no longer running as it should be. Why? There it goes. All right. So you can see I have the scope set up. Uh, the upper left-hand corner there. Uh, you can see the trace lines, though, are up, up high. I have that set up intentionally for a reason. Um, again, this is going to be checking the low side drive, which is reference to negative rail. Uh, so when you're in DC coupling and you are checking something that's uh, referenced to a negative rail, it's going to go down to your negative rail voltage, which if you're on a scale setting of 5 volts will go off your scale of your, of your uh, scope. But at the same time, I don't like to switch to AC coupling to bring it to the center of the screen because that really doesn't tell me the, what voltage it's setting at. So 
um, I'll just keep it in DC coupling and I will move the uh, trigger points to uh, be able to bring up the drive on the screen in a size that I can see, of course. Uh, when you're at 50 volts division, your drive is really, really small. So uh, I do recommend just zooming in on your, uh, on your scope uh, with your division setting your uh, voltage division settings and uh, just move your tr uh, move your trigger so I will start this power supply up no fan just install I gotta do some work on the fan it's kinda noisy green light is on relays engage and on the screen there you will see the low side square wave. Sorry, I don't have my channel one and channel two exactly the same. Um, I wanted to be able to separate them to recognize any um, odd variances in the signal. So you can see that real quick square wave pulse on that low side drive. Right at 64 kilohertz, out of reference at about 130 volts. So. Uh, again, these are referenced to negative rail. Now, since I have it on both channels, I shouldn't say channels, on both cards, I have low side drive on both cards, that is going to tell me I am good to go to install the uh, output transistors in these locations because I have low side drive. So that low side drive will charge the high side. The high side drive will swing as long as the low side drive is swinging. And then, as you can see on the scope here, how they're straight up over and straight down, it's because my gain is set at zero all the way down. So you won't see the square wave there modulating. And when you, when you say modulating, it controls the, uh, the pulse width of the uh, square wave. And that's how it modulates to get that sine wave from a class D circuit through the filtering, of course. Sorry, my camera, I don't know why, but it has been glitching lately um, in my videos. So again, another equipment issue. Uh, but that was kind of what I really just wanted to go over today was the kind of how these work. The quickest way to diagnose the output section of an Orion HCCA is get the power supply running, pull your transistors in the output, more than likely you're going to have shorted one anywhere somewhere anyways pull them all out pull them all out got to have an input signal i have an input signal at 50 hertz you don't have to have any gain uh to to get the square wave started but you do have to have an input signal um, and then fire the amp up, of course, keeping your fingers clear of the rail voltages. Again, this is 130 volts, as we see on the negative side here. We are 130 volts, so that means we have 130 volts on the positive side. So this could give you a bad day, so just make sure you stay clear of the rectified area here and stay clear of the output section, because you're going to have your voltages here also. And then uh, just check and make sure you have drive. And if you have drive... Then you can install your transistors because more than likely or most likely the amplifier will start up just fine um, since we do have low side drive. This camera, I do apologize for that guys. Uh, this camera here is giving me some issues so I will continue to work on problems with equipment. So I do thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. And of course, I will get back to you as soon as I can. Um, and as always, stay safe. Watch the real voltage. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.